first of all what is market research and why would a business carry out market research we study about uh, the dynamic market last class so because the you know, market keeps changing you need to do as much research as possible to know that uh, what the consumers want and uh, what you can do to provide for that uh, if the let's say let's say uh, if the market is not dynamic let's say a static market should a business then do research or not i mean it is a st even if it's a static market you can take someone else's research in my opinion because it doesn't change much so if it's static it won't change for a long time i'm assuming so some other previous uh, general records you can take from someone else mm. is that not a thing Mm, that's also a research so that would be that is something that we'd cover in a bit that's with regard to primary research and secondary research whether you do the research yourself or you rely on someone else's data for research so research is done for a number of purposes the first thing is that we want for example if a business is to launch a new product the business wants to know what are the risks associated with the launch of this new product? That's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, for anything that a business is selling, what's the guarantee that it would continue to sell in the future as well? For example, you said that it's a static market. You're assuming that the market in which you're operating is a static market. Are there chances that this static market, till now it had been static, would it continue to be static or not in the future? What's the guarantee? So that is something for which you'll have to do research. It could be that it continues to be static in the future as well, but that is something that you have to uh, do a research about either on your own or you have to buy or use someone else's research. Following me? Yeah. Okay. What so, is the thing for uh, comparison between two things you said assess was just one point and expand, define was define, analyze, what was the other one? Discuss. Discuss was okay. Yeah, discuss was both of them, right? Yes. Yes. You have to give the benefits as well as the disadvantages. And analyze the, is uh, just one-sided point of view. Analyze is one side, one-sided. Mm -hmm. Discuss is uh, from both aspects. So define, analyze, and assess are all one-sided. Define, analyze, and assess. Yes. In assess, one second. <laughs> In analyze for sure you have to give one sided uh, assess you can give the other side's opinion as well but not in as much detail it has to be almost equal weightage in discuss okay. so that's how it is okay. hmm. but your assessment is correct that assess analyze and uh, uh, let's say explain define they usually tend to be one sided okay okay Okay, so we were discussing why we need market research, a business, let's say a business is starting, should they start the business or not, which products should they launch, when they should launch, launch it, uh, they need market research for that. Then that whether the market that they are operating in, would it continue to be a dynamic market, would it continue to be a static market, but changes are going to be there in the market to predict future demand changes, they need market research. Uh, then they, for example, to assess the current competition level, they'll have to do research for that as well. The market is static, but static at what level? Who has what share in the market? Who has what share and why? I mean, let's say the share of your competitors uh, is 30, 30, 30, 33, 33, 33, it's equally distributed among three players. Why is it that way? Okay. And how? I mean, this was just one figure that I quoted that it's this way. Uh, what are other, for example, in many figures, the other day that we were looking at the uh, data for mobile phone markets, it had a large chunk for others. You remember this graph that we looked at yesterday, uh, the Huawei, Samsung and that thing. So it had a large chunk for others. Who are these others? I mean, is the others one big business and then distributed among many small Whatever you'll have to find these patterns in the market. This one. So almost half the market 
for half the market yes we have shares 4.3 4.6 is it that for this 44.8 percent not even three percent or four percent lies with one uh, market player that's why it didn't get a mention 4.3 percent it got a mention xiaomi but i'm assuming that for 48 44.8 percent either it's too big or we don't know so right. these businesses if they want to expand their market share they'll have to see what part of this one they can grab or what part is totally unaccounted for what are who are the people who are not even using mobile phones right now and maybe we can go and capture that market share the untapped market share right. okay right. so what else could a business do business research for uh uh to get the likings and dislikings of the people to get the likings dislikings buying patterns styles what promotions have worked in the past what way should we package our product how should the product it uh, should it reach the customers whether it should be sold online offline so all these trends they need to be tested so, so there are i remember this uh aren't you writing these down i'm supposed to write these sir just the would, head just the headings of this how would i know how would i know shall i write those over here on the jam board then wait yeah sure give me a second i'll write those here on the jam board and uh okay I'll start a notebook from next week. From today? No, from next week. I don't have a book right now, that's why. I've been struggling to find rough books to do my maths problems and papers on. Mm -hmm. So I'll just leave, uh, leave these things on the Jamboard then and you can copy that from here later on. Okay, so for market research, I said there are four things i didn't write down any notes for what we uh, discussed yesterday ha 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 we'll see if he notes for that or not okay so the, for the first one we had to reduce okay to predict future demand changes to predict future demand changes this is more likely to be for the existing products then we have got to reduce risks associated with new launches demand changes risk associated launch what does that mean when you are going to launch a new product uh, there are a lot of uncertainties uh, regarding that would the consumers uh, they accept this good or not which particular age group should i target what should i price the product should i go for premium pricing or very uh, cheap competitive pricing or competitive pricing um uh, what particular localities in a city should i sell the product in so questions regarding price place promotion and product the four P's of marketing as many of them as you can find an answer to before launching the product that is what you're trying to do okay uh, the third thing is that you explain patterns to explain patterns slash trends in market and the fourth one is uh, this is with regards to market how the market performs uh, the same thing has to be done with regards to consumers as well to assess tastes uh, uh styles flavors F 
फेवर्ड बाय कंज्यूमर्स ऑल राइट ऑल राइट ओके सो when a business this is what a business does the research for the next question is that if a business they now know that what they want to do the research for the next thing is how would they do the research what would be the steps involved in the market research so the steps Market research. What would they begin with? Steps of market research. They would begin with primary research. So they would be doing secondary research from other. Okay. They would begin with primary research and then they will go for secondary research. Masha Allah. They will begin with a problem. <laughs> a business. No, but... Oh. A business is facing a current problem, or it is concerned about a prospective problem, a problem that it might face in the future. And to address this problem, they'll do market research. Current and prospective. prospective. Okay, it could be that the business is facing this problem right now, or it could be that the business anticipates that it it's going to face this problem later on down the road. so that is what they'll begin with for research uh, what are the sorts of problem for example if sales of a business are declining a current problem all right how can we uh, make entry into another country let's say could be a prospective problem or could be that they are uh, anticipate uh, they are trying to uh, uh, make their foothold in a new territory uh, can they divide can they identify for example they want to increase the sales to increase the sales they want to identify the customer groups so can my customers be divided in various groups based on some common characteristic and we'll see that how we do that in a bit okay uh, why my sales is declining uh, how can i increase my market share uh, what is the size of the market that i am selling in it could be that i am selling in a market but i do not do not know the full potential of the market in which i am selling so all these different sort of problems the business begins with a problem that uh, this is the problem that i have to sort out then okay. out of the various problems that a business faces uh, or it uh, for example for example it has identified out of these many problems one problem that it is going to solve then they define research objectives all right i am going to do a research about this problem but what would be covered in the research what would be the scope of research and what would not be covered in the research so for example a business is uh, uh, let's say concerned about declining sales okay so now when you are going to go for the research what are you going to see are you just going to see the uh, let's say bifurcation of the market uh, not bifurcation the distribution of the market like the how much market share is distributed among many shareholders are you going to look in the past data how much past data are you going to look into how much future projections are you going to make um are you going to focus on which products of your business are you going to focus on Uh, are you going to focus only on the sales aspect or are you going to cover cover the production and the supply chain aspect as well so these are for the research a business has to define objectives that what how is it going uh, regarding the problem that it is facing what particular aspects of those problem would it cover in it uh, in its research is it clear uh huh okay so having defined the research objectives then the third thing comes which is the source of data source of data and for this we have got primary primary and, secondary and secondary i'm um, genius i am so smart i'm so, already give me the a star already all right uh, well, okay so th- what's the difference between primary research and secondary research uh primary research done by some uh, by uh, you and secondary is done by someone else primary it could be wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. primary is done so by primary you primary research is done 
yeah, no primary done by yourself like you do right. it yourself yeah, correct, correct. Uh, like the data like uh, mm. su- surveys and whatever blah blah correct, correct. secondary is you take it from someone else mm. and the advantage of primary is you know that it's credible secondary you you can't be sure uh, and yeah that's all i know okay we'll go about these things bit by bit so for primary and secondary you gave the correct description that primary is uh, dependent on uh, market research sorry uh, the research that a business does itself and secondary is that uh, it relies on research which has been done by someone else or it relies on data which has been produced by someone else my question is what is the source of data for the secondary research source of data of the secondary research is the internet my very good like very good number 1 is, is internet then uh, uh experienced people like i guess i don't know okay uh, the second could be government publications so government at times uh, to times scroll and documents yes one of papers uh, uh what are those pandora papers or something yeah Mistake. government publication so the government from time to time it's uh, measuring as well as uh, making it public <laughs> the data related to population uh, social trends economic trends uh, family expenditure survey all sorts of thing okay so you can rely on this government data or government publications for your research another thing which is not so used or so much used but could be uh local libraries and government offices so local libraries and government offices so obviously you will be getting the surveys which have been done by various agencies uh, they will be available in uh, various government agencies which will be available at the government offices and local libraries obviously you'll be able to uh, access the research papers of other people uh, who have made it uh, available at those libraries or uh, you could look into the books on any subject to find out information on that subject okay um third or fourth is trade organizations okay so for example in pakistan there is an organization called aptama all pakistan textile mills association similarly there is one for uh, journalists there is one for uh, cotton producers uh, there is one for sugar mills so there is one for tanneries this leather industry uh, i believe there is one of these uh, oil industry companies as well the refineries and omcs but different organizations belonging to the same trade they usually form trade organizations they gather and uh published data related to published data related to their particular field or their particular line of business the like fifth what happened with night bulbs like what happened with night bulbs what's this night bulb thing i'm not aware of it light bulbs light bulbs what's that scandal yeah. i don't know uh it is where every uh this company that made light bulbs created an organization mm. they made a pact that they would uh, make their light bulbs last less longer you could say they had actually found a way to make light bulbs last for like 10 20 30 years mm. but they did not make them cuz uh, then nobody would uh, buy from them buy i mean the sales would yeah, decline mm. yeah mm. 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 uh that's all right so that's maybe a way of uh, uh, businesses of same organizations pulling together their research and going about making a joint pact or joint pay with it but yes it it could be it could be an example fifth is an interesting one there are market intelligence reports market intelligence reports so, so what is the third one local local libraries and government offices local libraries and government offices where so just books right uh, books and research papers of for example a library with a university would have the access to research papers which have been published by researchers of those uh, associated with that particular university okay so who does uh, all 
this work the work of research this is the source of data you have to collect this data and uh, maybe you're not yeah, producing yeah, yeah. data but on your own what is the person hired for like when he's hired to a business to do all this what is he called you're saying that you hire a business to do this research what is that business called no don't you buy i mean don't you hire a person to do all this research what is that person called mm, analyst analyst uh, you usually what uh, uh, this thing this first one would perhaps make it clear for you so these different trade organizations uh, there are those which specialize in the business consultancy for example the mckinsey uh, boston consulting groups bain and company these organizations what they do is from time to time they analyze different markets and they publish yeah, their researches don't, don't every doesn't every single business have the, uh, do market research so that person who is hired to do market research what is he called he could be called a market analyst it depends from company to company what title they use for uh, these people could be could be a, an employee of the marketing department if it's market research do they get paid <laughs> uh they do get paid and uh, they make fine i don't they they aren't really famous for making a lot of money these uh, these uh, uh companies for example these big consultancy groups i think they charge a lot and there are i mean there is a meme about everything around these days but uh, there are famous cases where and the thing is that people who work in a particular industry they are more aware of uh, the shortcomings of that industry so on internet you can easily the allegation is that these companies they do not really for example they are telling you what's just common sense and they are charging you for that yeah so and somehow so businesses in the few you going to google and searching they will search for you they'll search for you and they'll charge you a lot for that that's what i was going to ask next like what kind of research are these guys doing that you pay them so much uh so these guys the uh, theory is or at least the what they say is that they since they have been operating for these 100 plus years they have gathered the uh, let's say market data they have for example in this end we'll see that anybody who is doing the research it's all about having the data from the customers in digital or uh, physical form and then making patterns out of that data analyzing patterns present within the data and then predict uh, explaining the past and predicting the future that's the crux of research you gather data you analyze the data you uh, explain the past you predict the future Sorry. Okay. Uh, so these market intelligence reports, they are even by, for example, these big four, uh, PwC, Deloitte, etc. They also publish uh, reports, but they are usually related to either financial aspect of things or related to financial markets. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Internal company records. Internal company records could also be a source of. secondary research so maybe you have done some research in the past and it now helps you it now helps you for this future research okay maybe you launched a product in the past and uh, let's say just last year so the data that you collected for uh, during that period of time for the launch of this last product it comes in handy this time as well moving on to moving on to what are the benefits and drawbacks of primary and secondary research so for primary and secondary research what are the benefits and drawbacks one you said that it's more accurate uh, here accuracy is a question mark what else in primary in secondary even hmm. secondary is often since they have specialized in doing research uh, and they do this research day in day out your primary task is not 
doing research you are carrying out a business your specialty is not in the field of research so you might be able to do the research but it would cost you more it would be let's say uh, more resource consuming for you so it would be costly if you do the primary research and maybe less costly if you do the secondary research what else uh, more credible when it's primary because it would be let's say more updated the primary research and it would be less updated the secondary one hmm. it would be more time consuming the primary one and this one would be less time consuming hmm. primary research the biggest advantage is that it is, it is confidential it is something that is just available with you whereas the secondary research others might also have access to it hmm. anything else uh, might be wrong to throw you off hmm. Okay, uh, then we discussed about secondary research, various sources of secondary research. What about primary research? What are the different ways in I can carry out the primary research? Survey. Hmm? Survey. 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 Okay. Survey. Hmm. Hmm. So for this uh, primary research, we first of all, uh, divide it into two types. One is called qualitative. What? And the and the other is called quantitative. Quality over quantity. So quantitative, you are just gathering the numbers, figures. Qualitative, you are going beyond gathering the numbers you are looking for the interpretation of those numbers as well or the trends or the explanation for those numbers as well okay so quantitative is less stuff uh, yes we can say because we can in say quantitative in quantitative it's only numbers in qualitative it's numbers and the explanation of those numbers that's what you said right mm. 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 Okay, uh, qualitative is again more on uh, less dependent on numbers and more with regards to details. One thing about qualitative research, there is a particular type called focus group. What we do in focus group is, uh, for example, we have a group of people coming together and you give that group of people a particular product and they all use that product and with research the questionnaire thing is that you just give them the questionnaire they fill it out and you're not able to ask them questions back on what they have uh, given as their initial response with this focus group you have them use the product and for people filling out questionnaire it's not necessary that they've used the product as well with focus group you try to make sure that they've used the product as well so they use the product and then you do cross questioning with them so they give them an uh, say so they give you an answer questioning are they pay for this or sometimes they are sometimes would be not necessary okay so you do cross questioning for example they say that i like this tea you then ask them what particular thing uh, did they like about this tea if i change this particular aspect was it aroma was it taste was it the temperature if the tea had been presented in a different cup would you have still liked it uh, and the downside of this focus group thing is that because of peer pressure with all these people answering a certain way and your answer being slightly certain uh, slightly different from the rest of the group you might shy or, away from giving that answer or, or um, your opinion is the same as others but you want to be different could be that could be that as well could be that as well 
okay so with with regards to this quantitative research with regards to this quantitative research we have got a few techniques uh, the first one is observation and recording so a person just stands at a place he observes a particular group of people for whatever trade he wants to observe and uh, he records that as simple as that do the workers turn up for work on time a person simply stands at uh, over there at the morning time and see if they come and leave on time do the worker they use social media while being at uh, their workplace a person just goes around observing and recording his observations okay so these sort of things can be covered in quantitative research another method is another method is test marketing so test marketing is when you go out in the market uh, sometimes they are uh, having you for example sir we are here with this new perfume would you like to try it uh, there is this new brand of tea would you like to try it there is this new brand of sweets if you'd like to try it so they just carry their products with them these sales people and they have different people try their product and get their opinion on that product okay they have got the question uh, question as with them the other thing the third way is simply having consumer service as you said consumer service okay but hmm. nobody answers them right Mm. Okay, maybe not nobody, but uh, some people they just mm. uh, mm. 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 That's that's a limitation of the research. That's a limitation of the research. True, true. Okay, so with regards to consumer service, we have to be mindful about a few things. What are those things? First is what to ask. So if you are there, uh, if your sales is declining, uh, the ideally you'd be looking for people. No, that's in who to ask. Uh, okay, so the first one is who to ask. Who should I ask the question? If let's say my sales is declining, ideally I'm looking for people who used to use my product and now they have stopped using it. Somebody who had been using my products and still sings praises for my product, he might not be the right person to ask why my sales is declining. He might have some idea, but he is not the ideal person to ask. The second question is the second thing to be mindful of in these consumer surveys is that what to ask. So you are carrying out this research about decline of sales. You are not ideally looking for what's good in your product. So you go and ask them questions: What do you like about our product? How many? I mean, uh, would you recommend it to other people or not? you are looking for the weaknesses in your product because your sales is declining so your questions should be around that particular objective that you had at start of the research okay the third thing is how to ask could you give me just one second sure. All right, all right. So the third question is how to ask. How to ask? Okay. Uh, should I should I have the questionnaire in the physical form, like actual pen and paper, or should I have it on the digital media? The second thing is should I have the questionnaire fill the questionnaire for the people or uh, should I have the people fill it out themselves? Obviously, if you the person is filling uh, the sales representative or whoever is doing the researcher is filling the questions for them, uh, the likelihood is that he would get more answers. Other people, if you ask them, would you like to please fill this out for me? The the chances that their decline is higher. Or, for example, I have got this questionnaire that I want you to answer there are two ways that I have this questionnaire in my hand I just ask you those questions and I fill it out myself right the other way is that I give you the questionnaire and ask you to fill it out yourself 
when i give you to fill it out i'll get lesser responses when i have people or respondents filling out the surveys themselves the responses will decline right it's easier right. to just tell your opinion than to write it down right right and fourth and the most uh, important thing uh, about this thing is like you mentioned how accurate it is are the people just filling out the survey to get rid of it i mean there is let's say a formality there is a requirement that they fill out the survey or are they actually giving you the accurate information genuinely interested in making the product better or helping you solve your pro problem uh -huh. are most surveys free most they will not get offered for 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 surveys uh, there is a thing that can you give respondents uh, should you give respondents some money or some reward for filling out surveys usually it's not usually you just uh, ask them the service the way they i mean ask them the questions and they give you there is no reward involved usually that is the case but in certain cases you may do that as well there is another thing with uh, when i said how to ask uh, there is another thing involved which is open and close ended questions uh for example if you ask people how are you feeling right now that is one way of asking it the other way of asking it how are you feeling right now good bad really good really bad so you give them options to choose from when you give close ended questions you get higher response if you give them options to choose out of you'll get higher response but those options they won't be as descriptive uh huh those options they won't be as descriptive as uh, when you give them the open ended question open ended questions they can explain themselves set okay but the response rate would decline in open ended questions okay okay so this we have discussed you have clear and simple questions at all right this would cover in bias okay with research a limitation of research is uh, with sequence i was doing okay it will get covered later on online service postal service focus groups consumer panels uh you can do face to face or telephone interviews you can do product trials test marketing i think you haven't started uh reading this book yet no okay secondary research website social media all covered in internet uh television radio reports newspapers magazines databases databases is where you store your information once you gather this information of research you have to store it somewhere the databases these uh, cloud drives they allow you to store a large quantity of data qualitative quantitative research we've discussed um yes let's get to sampling let's get to sampling okay the thing with research is that whenever you have got a market before you it's usually impossible to go and ask every particular person who is uh, who is who is a potential respondent to answer your questions aha uh -huh. okay so you always have to resort to sampling sampling is you choose a sample or you choose a portion out of the total population which could have responded and you just ask this sample your questions you perform your result uh, you perform your test on this sample and then you extrapolate it on the whole population let me check what's covered in the next chapter and then i'll give you details accordingly um so what is it market positioning market mapping okay not much to do with research oh, okay 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 so then the question arises how can you uh, choose a sample another problem with sampling another thing with sampling is you have to define sample size the larger there is with sampling there arises a risk called sampling risk yes. Sam sampling risk is that the result that you get from sample 
is not the same as the result that you would have got had you tested the whole population. The result that you get from the sample I get is I different get from the result that you would have got had you tested the whole population. Okay, so if that's sampling risk, you would be able to understand this as well. If I increase the sample size, the sampling risk would decline. And if I decrease the sample size, the sampling risk would increase. Indeed. It okay. But the thing is, if I increase the sample size to reduce the sampling risk, it would involve more time and the more the sample size, the less the purpose of sampling. I mean, what's the point of sampling then if you are going about testing the whole population just to control your sampling risk. So you have to uh, reach, a, uh, let's say, in between situation where you are managing the sample risk as well as the ease that comes with sampling. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, then the thing is that uh, there are two types of sampling methods. One are probability based and the other are non-probability based. Okay. So in the probability based sampling methods, let's talk about probability based first. Sampling error it is called or sampling what? Sampling risk. Risk. Okay, in probability based methods, the first one that we have is random sampling. And usually people confuse random sampling with haphazard sampling. They are different. Haphazard sampling is that you have a whole, let's say, uh, whole bunch of numbers before you and you just go about picking and choosing whichever you feel like choosing. That is haphazard sampling. That's not random sampling. In random sampling, what you do is you arrange your uh, data in sequence and then you feed your whole data to random table generators. There are random table generators available online. Uh -huh. Those random table generators would tell you that this, 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 this uh, item from your population, you have to test that. Okay. Okay. That's random sampling. You can't do random sampling on your own because always in your mind there would be some bias that I add this number, I subtract this number. So that what you do with just your using your mind, that's not random sampling. We rely on system for uh, random number generators. Okay. The third, the second one is systematic sampling. Okay. Can you explain them again? Okay, the first one is actually... These are just problems with sampling, right? No, no, these are methods of choosing sample. I have to choose a sample. How do I choose my sample? Okay. Okay, so these are methods of sampling. Okay. So the first one that I said, it was non-probability based. I would cover that again when I go for non-probability based. I am right now covering the probability based methods. These... Uh, in these probability based methods, we choose sample with some uh, calculation. In sample as in like a person, right? Just sample is that I have got, for example, in Pakistan, I have got population of 210 million. I am selling my product in Pakistan. I can't test all these 210 million. Let's say I can just uh, test just 1000. Okay, so this thousand is my sample. How many states do you have in Pakistan? Let's say five. It's five? Should I include Kashmir? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Uh, so, uh, thousand divided by five. There is GB as well, part as well, but let's say five. I'm th That's one way, we'll get to it. We'll get to it that how then I divide this thousand. The first problem is that I've got a big population which I cannot test completely. So I choose a sample out of it. Now the question is which thousand people should I test? Those thousand. Okay. So uh, uh, the first way the first way I said is random sampling from the probability based methods. And just to tell you not to confuse it with haphazard sampling, in random sampling we arrange the data in sequence. We give the random table generators that this is the number of data that I have got and this is the sample size. For example, I'll tell that I've got a population of 210,000, 210 million people and out of that give me a sample of 1000. So it would give me numbers, this, 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 this number of uh, person in your data, you should test this, these people. 
and those people if i test that would be random sampling okay okay uh app has a app has it is that i just go about finding whatever i mean choosing on my own i'll test person number 1 person number 10 person number 299 person number 566 just choosing about my own okay that's app has it Okay. okay the next one is systematic sampling systematic sampling is that i arrange this 210000 people in sequence then i divide 1000 uh, divide this 210 million with 1000 all right okay. it would give me a number 210000 let's say so if i start from 1 then the next person would be 210000 and one the next person would be 420000 one the next person would be 643000 one so after every 210000 people i'd be choosing the person every 210000 person i'm choosing it i divide the whole population divide the whole population with sample size okay but how do you arrange these people in the first place uh, when i've got the data uh, i usually uh, that's up to me if i am arranging them based on age if i am arranging them alphabetically i have to that's up to me how i have initially arranged my data this data i have to arrange before feeding that data into the uh, sampling exercise Okay. So I arrange the data. I could arrange it alpha uh, alphabetically. I could arrange it stratified, whatever way. But then it would once I get to these methods, then I stick with that. I, I do not then change the sequence of the data. What do you do if they don't respond? Uh, that's the thing. That's the thing. If for uh your sampling method, it should have. Threaten them. Uh, threaten them. It could be that. if this particular number is not available there are different again uh, the catalog that you have you will describe your methodology in it so it could be that then you choose the next person in it but if no, on no, your own they're, if they're, on your own if on your own you could not find you choose not to uh, let's say use just one person out of this sample then that system has broken down and you you are not using haphazard sampling Yeah, so just threaten them, tell them. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so you know what's best for you. Tell me, th- do this survey. I like that. Okay. Hmm. Okay. The next one is stratified yeah. sampling. In stratified sampling, as you said, for example, I can uh, arrange the data uh, based on common characteristics. I define. I break them down into groups, and then from each group. i choose a particular number that is stratified sampling oh so now we racist okay okay the next thing is even more racist it's called quota sampling okay quota sampling so for example if you are doing your survey with school students okay 65% of them may are male you initially broke them down into 65% and 35% male female So sixty-five percent male, thirty-five percent female. Then you broke them the into age groups. Let's say fourteen to twenty. This much. Uh, with school, it wouldn't be fourteen to twenty. It would be. Let's say seven to ten, ten to thirteen, thirteen to sixteen, and sixteen to nineteen. Okay, and you give them percentages. Uh, for each particular group, and then when you choose sample from uh it your sh- sample should be representative of the breakup of the population so from girls from female students there should be 35% respondents from male there should be 65% respondents and then based on age bracket you again from the let's say if 7 to 10 was 35% 35% of students should be from that particular age group and so on okay if your sample represents the uh, patterns of population that you had identified i have a question though hmm. how did they sample 
anything for counting the total population on earth uh counting the total population if you are calculating the total population why would you sample it but how do you calculate it then you can't just calculate every single person uh with each country they carry out census they gather together the data of census and obviously census is not calculated each year so from one census to the next one they calculate how rapidly or how quickly the population is increasing uh -huh. similarly the government they uh, we don't even realize the uh, government machinery what sort of work is being done in the background they are continuously collecting this data of uh, death rates and birth rates from hospitals how many death cases had been uh, reported at any hospital how many newborns were there at any hospital with death rates which particular age group people are dying so government machinery is obviously there would be let's say uh, a child uh, is born in a village let's say it doesn't go to a hospital the woman okay yeah. uh, a person passes away and just the dead body rots away in a jungle or something so there are obviously anomalies but those anomalies are not they won't change the data of let's say a country of a billion people by Why? that you much never know. especially it's not that much it's not that much yeah, even 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 for that they have statistics that they have an estimate here comes in the role of estimate they involve that this per, this much is our estimate that it's unaccounted for so they account for it and but estimate can be wildly wrong as well like completely wrong could be could be true uh, true that's limitation of it but with census with census they had been uh, obviously with the urban population it's more uh, easy to calculate the data uh, yeah. there are more systems in place in the cities uh, with rural areas they have uh, the government i haven't been let's say involved in the census activity in the sense that i haven't been on the data collection part but from what i have seen the way they collect data uh, in pakistan uh, Uh, i was surprised they there is this pakistan economic survey each year they uh, publish this data regarding the economic activity in pakistan what's inflation what's the uh, economic activity in different sectors what sectors are increasing they go product by product for some products they are selling, telling you that th there was this percent uh, inflation month to month they, i mean they give amazing data and if that's for pakistan for india for usa for europe the data would be far better uh -huh. Uh -huh. so even with such countries uh, we don't always your your concern is true that then depends on how good the government machinery is or how good the statistics department uh, statistics department of that particular country is it comes down to that right so we could literally be 20 billion right now but no one knows no one knows I mean, you would know. Uh, other way, uh, other. Uh, for example, if you are twenty billions, there would be burden on human uh, government machinery for that. For example, uh, they have to provide for infrastructure, food, clothing, shelter. They have to provide for. Uh, they have data of how much output was created that by. That is only for the urban population. There are a number of ways. For for example, the rural population they still eat food, right? So you have an estimate of what was the total wheat that was produced in your country, and what was the import export? Why? Why? How about they just make their own wheat? They just live on their own. Uh, again, there are other things: use of electricity, uh, hospitalization. There are different ways this thing is done. This uh, system of how do uh, you calculate that for children? Calculate what for children? Uh, the food consumption? No, electricity. If you are calculating mm -hmm. house to house, mm -hmm. how the thing, you know how the, people. The thing are. is, the thing is that the data. I agree with you. At lots of places, it involves estimation. But I am telling you that the proportion of estimates that they make is far less than what you are thinking of. Number one, and number two, for those estimates, they are not just wild guesses. Wild guesses they are. <laughs> they are absolutely wild. There's no way anyone can estimate that. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. Uh, these were probability-based methods for sampling. 
Allahu Akbar. Then we have non probability based methods. So, non probability sampling. This uh, is. Uh, you didn't complete that quota sampling. Quota sampling is, uh, I told you that you find the strata in your population and then your uh, sample that you have, it gets a quota from, I mean, you you choose sample from the whole population that represents those strata that are there in the population. Strata means what? Like what's the actual word meaning? Strata, 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 let me quickly check. From what I understand, it is grouping things into strata meaning. A layer or series of layers of rock in the ground, level or class to which people are assigned according to their social status, income, level education. Or class, so actual, actual. Disclusion. I don't know the word. Mm. Wow, nice. That's, that's good to hear. Segments, you can use the word. Segregation, you know. Mm. Segments, yes. Indeed. Indeed. I misspoke, you know. Sound the same. Okay, okay. These quota sampling and stratified sampling, they are a bit confusing. I wish if you could give these two a read later on after the class or whenever you go about reading this chapter, then thin woods, uh, things would become a little bit more clear for you. Just to wrap it up, just to wrap it up for this non probability uh, sampling, we have got a few methods. Uh, there is convenience sampling. So the way you choose sample is whatever person you can conveniently get access to. That's one way. Another way is snowball sampling. So you ask one person and then you tell that person to send one more person and then you conduct survey on that. Then the second person you tell to send one more person or some other person. Okay, so, so probably each, best is more accurate. That's what you're saying. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, then you could use uh, the other two non probability could be uh, ad hoc or judgmental. Based on your own understanding, you just come about a method that this is the way I should be choosing sample. Okay. You can do that as well. Okay? okay, that would be judgmental or ad hoc sampling. Okay, so this is as much as is there in your book.